suicide and self-harm women and girl survivors of violence. Domestic violence has been found to be amongst the leading causes of suicide and self-harm in women. Family problems and intimate relationship concerns have been found to play an important role in suicidal behaviors in women. Some of the risk factors that increase women's vulnerability to suicide and self-harm include ongoing experiences of violence and discrimination, absence or inadequacy of social support and connectedness, barriers to accessing help and services, hopelessness and isolation, prior history of mental illnesses and chronic health conditions, easy access to lethal means and stigma towards mental illness and help seeking. Survivors of domestic violence may present directly with suicidal and self-harm attempts or indirectly by talking about death wishes. Sometimes the survivor may only talk about suicidal ideas or self-harm behaviors when probed by a counselor. It is important for the counselor to hence probe with the survivor and check for suicidal ideas and attempts and also for self-harm behaviors. Counselors often do not probe about suicide or self-harm since they carry certain myths around suicide like talking or probing about suicide will encourage such thoughts. People who threaten suicide are only seeking attention. Counselors should be aware that these are only myths and not facts. The counselor should not act shocked, use moralistic judgments, lecture, make the survivor feel guilty, challenge, dare or belittle her. Instead, the counselor should offer non-judgmental support and adopt a strengths-based response towards the survivor. The counselor should assess suicidal risk and severity. This can be done by checking for recent or past suicidal ideas or attempts. The counselor must also assess the frequency, intensity, lethality of suicidal thoughts or attempts and details of suicidal plans. Additionally, the counselor must explore the survivor's coping mechanisms and support systems. The counselor should normalize survivor's thoughts and behavior as a possible response to a crisis situation such as violence. At the same time, identify and highlight the alternatives. These alternatives can include helpful and constructive ways of coping, such as protecting oneself, talking about violence with trusted others, seeking help, engaging in self-care, etc. In case of high severity of suicidal ideation or attempt, the counselor should immediately refer the survivor to emergency health and mental health services. The counselor should seek the survivor's consent before the referral. The counselor should maintain an exhaustive and verified directory of health, mental health, and other support services for effective referral. The counselor must simultaneously work on providing immediate safety and stability to the survivor, prevent future attempts, build hope, and enhance social support, coping strategies, and resilience. A safety plan should be drawn with the survivor. This includes identification and listing of triggers for suicidal thoughts or behaviors helpful coping strategies and support systems to be accessed when triggered, reminders of strengths and emergency contacts of mental health and health professionals. Along with the safety plan, a follow-up plan should be drawn and the counsellor must stay closely in touch with the survivor.